Well, my friends, spring is in the air and so is the sound of cursing because millions of people are going out and trying to start their lawnmower and the ding dang thing won't start. Let's go through the only two reasons your mower will not start and how to get this thing started. Here we go. <laughs> Come on! So I work at a lawnmower shop and the top call I get every spring is my lawnmower won't start, come pick it up. These are the things I walk through with people every day and we're not gonna just pick it up for no reason. We wanna make sure there's a reason to pick it up. So I said there's only two reasons that your lawnmower won't start and that is completely accurate. A lawnmower starts with two things, fuel and fire. Perhaps if you're a Metallica fan, you'll know what I'm talking about, right baby? Anyway, those are the only two things we need to worry about. Is there fuel and is there fire? Let's get into the fire first. One of the top things I see when people are trying to start their tractor is they don't have any electricity moving through the tractor. That's fire. Um, and there's things that will prevent it and you may have forgot them over the course of the winter. One of the top ones is making sure that your e-brake is turned on. <laughs> And if you have a zero turn mower that your bales are out. There's safety switches here that if these bales aren't pushed out, your e-brake isn't on, your PTO, you know, your blade engagement isn't turned off, your mower's not going to start. Let's start there and just make sure you didn't lose your mind over the winter. So if you're pushing down your parking brake, you've got your steering bales out. Uh, if you're making sure your PTO is turned off, the thing still won't start. Let's, let's look in here real quick. This is a safety switch right here. This is connected to my parking brake. There's a bunch of these safety switches all over the machine and you just want to make sure these are moving freely. Maybe take some contact cleaner and spray them. But if those are all freed up, you can hear them clicking. Listen. Then we can move on to other things. And the next biggest thing I see is right here, this battery. Everybody will always tell me, and there's nothing wrong with my battery. My battery's brand new. I tested my battery. I charged my battery. My battery's perfect. And they bring me a battery that looks something like this. I don't even know if you could still consider this a battery. Frankly, if I go anywhere near this thing, I'm going to want to have a tetanus shot. But these are the kind of batteries we get in, and people tell us they're perfectly good. That battery is not perfectly good. It's not your starter. It's not your starter solenoid. Forget every other YouTube video you've watched telling you to check all these things. Nine times out of ten, it's your battery. <laughs> Try to jump the machine. You know, get your truck over there, your car over there, put a jump starter on it. If you can make the machine jump, it's your battery. Just go bring your battery in, get a new one. You can recharge your battery. It'll show perfect voltage. But in many cases, the cells in that battery have died, especially if it sat over a long, cold winter. That battery is no good. Now, if you do have a perfectly new, brand new battery, make sure your connections here are clean. The negative connection is the one I see most often for some reason that doesn't work. It's, it'll be all dirty or musty or a wire got bitten by a, by a rodent. So you'll go to put your key in the ignition here and everything will show up. Your hour meter will pop up because there's positive, but the system can't ground. It can't start if it can't ground. Make sure you've got good connections on your battery. And then just follow your wires around. Here's your starter solenoid. Everybody always tells me their starter solenoid's bad. It's never bad. Follow this connection. Make sure the connections under these boots are good. And then get into your starter right under here. It's a big black cylindrical thing with a wire going to it. You'll figure it out. Make sure that connection's good. And again, I can almost categorically guarantee you, it's not your starter, it's not your starter solenoid, it's your battery. Um, one other thing people always wanna, wanna do is put a new spark plug in the machine. Feel free, but it's not your spark plug. If your machine was running cruddy at the end of last year, okay, maybe it has some fouled spark plugs, but if it was running fine, you parked it, the battery's dead, guys, the battery's dead. Okay, so that's fire, that's our electricity. How about fuel? How are we gonna see what fuel problems we got. Here we go. So we get these machines that come in all the time. The people guarantee us it's a brand new battery. Maybe they bought one from us and they want me to do all sorts of crazy things like change out their, uh, their uh, uh, fuel pump 
it's not your fuel pump. That's not your problem. And they tell me, well, I thought maybe the oil was low, so I filled the oil. And oftentimes these machines come in, the oil's way too full, okay? If a lack of oil is the reason your machine won't start, you're screwed. No amount of oil you can put in that thing's gonna help you, the engine's toast. It's not oil. Make sure you have oil, but it's not oil. It's fuel. So what we end up doing is opening this here fuel tank, peering inside. Now half the time there's no fuel in there. Make sure you got gas in your tank. And please, 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 I hear all the time, it's brand new fuel, I know it's good. And brand new means it was sitting in a fuel can for two years. That's not brand new fuel. Fuel goes bad very quickly these days. Even ethanol free gas can go bad very quickly. If that fuel is more than a few weeks old, it's not good anymore. You can put it in your car, your car will burn it somehow. But these little engines, they do not like to burn old fuel. There's water in it, there's guck, there's muck. So we'll get into these fuel tanks, we'll suck up all this fuel and half of it'll be water. Put in new fuel, half the time they start. Your fuel is very important. Old fuel is not good fuel. So if this thing's been sitting all winter long with fuel in it, guess what? You got bad fuel in that tank, let's get that fuel out. Now of course people will tell me, nah, I put new fuel in, it doesn't work. I need something else, you're lying to me. Okay, no problem. I'm lying to you because I don't, I get paid to lie, right? It's your fuel. These fuel lines here, I've seen them get loose. I've seen them get broken. Check your fuel lines. Now, while you're investigating your fuel lines, if you've got a fuel pet cock like this in line with your fuel line, make sure it's not closed. Probably want to make sure that's open. I uh, know from experience. <laughs> This fuel filter here, this gets clogged up really bad. Maybe you need a fuel, new fuel filter. And in the end, I took the back of this machine off to make my life easier to show you stuff. What's going on right here is this carburetor is full of, there it is, is full of old, nasty, gross fuel. And if you drain it out, take this carb out and clean it, nine times out of 10, your machine's gonna start. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, that's no big deal. Call up your dealer or uh, you know, call up a, a lawnmower shop and get the thing fixed. But I'm here to tell you the worst thing you can do is go off to the parts store, buy a starter, buy a starter solenoid, buy a new ignition switch, buy a new key, overfill your engine with oil, okay? And be mystified that your machine won't start. There's only two reasons, bad fuel, or no electricity. Hope y'all are having a great day. We will see you around. Have fun mowing out there.